Hi everyone, I'm back again. Gonna be like this for the next day or two. Um, I just got through a note with my Nomadland review. Um, we'll watch it. I guess, and it no matter what the order, you're gonna watch it in any order you want. Um, yeah. <laughs> like Breaking Bad. You need to watch every episode to fully understand it. Um, no. Um, so anyway, intro, Grant, focus. I'm Grant, the movie and TV guy. Movie and TV guy show. Um, watched two movies today. The other one there's not much to talk about, but I'm still going to talk about it because that's what I do here. I'm making a log. So, um, this movie is similar title, but not a similar movie, really. Um, and that movie is Land. Not Nomad Land, just Land. Um, Land is, um, directed by Robin Wright. Um, Robin Wright, um, the great Robin Wright, who also was in, um, who's an actor who starred in all the Princess Bride, Forrest Gump, you know Robin Wright. Um, House of Cards. And Robin Wright, and it's also starring Robin Wright. Um, and that's his directorial debut. And, um, here's the premise, um, basically. So the basic premise of the movie is... I'm going to know some parallels with Nomad Lane, but they're not really parallels at all. Um, Robin Wright plays Edie, who's this woman who, um, something tragic happened to her. Her, her um, husband and son had passed away. She doesn't know how to deal with it, so basically what she's going to do is she's made up her mind. I told her sister, Kim Dickens, played by Kim Dickens, I'm going, I am going into the wilderness I'm going to stay in a cabin and die. That's her plan. She wants to go into the cabin and basically her plan is to... Well, getting too glossy about it, she, she's going to commit suicide. That's her plan. She wants to go. I can't deal with life anymore. She wants to be alone and she just wants to end it all. She goes with all the plans to this. She is saved from the brink of this by a local... Named Miguel. He's played by a uh, um, terrific character actor, Demian Pichir. He comes in and saves her. Um, a nurse friend of his. She tells him, like, look. And he kind of knows what's going on. He says, look. I want to be alone. I don't want to be around other people. So what you need to do is... What you um, need to do is, like, just... He says, okay, like, I'm going to teach you how to survive out here as long as you can. For you to, like, you know, do what you need to do. Teach you how to, teach you how to hunt, you how to fish, whatever. And then I'll just leave you be. And she says, okay. And then in return, you don't tell me anything about the outside world. And he kind of is kind of an amusing bit where he says, you know, oh, what aliens land? Do you, you know, can't tell me. Well, slowly but surely, she begins to befriend Miguel. And the thing is, is that Edie and Miguel, um... She finds a new lease on life. She finds a new meaning to live through her friendship with this this stranger. And then, um, where it helps them both heal. It turns out he's suffered a tragedy, the loss of his family as well. He's not so different from Edie. His, he said, like, his only family left is his sister-in-law's daughters, his nieces. are kind of the only thing he has left. How much to say about this movie except, um, a couple things. Um... Movies like Land are hard to talk about because when a movie's true, when a movie's terrible, like Earwig and the Witch, or I don't know, like Chips, it's easy to talk about because you're just gonna rip it. If a movie's mediocre, it's easy to talk about because you can just be like, yeah, I'm not much to say. It's just kind of bad. It's just kind of forgettable. And when a movie's great, it's relatively easy to talk about as long as you have the words. Just kind of gush like I did with the video before this one. Problem with Land is, it's a good it's a good movie that is this close to being a great one and just doesn't snatch snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. It just barely misses. Um, and it's due to one kind of fundamental flaw in the plot. And I, minor spoilers because talk about this, I kind of have to. I'm not going to spoil everything, but I'm just going to just kind of minor. And I kind of talked to this about. Um, I made friends kind of with. There's a, there's a couple who was, who was just us. 
we kind of talked about Cypher and this guy, this young man, um, in this couple is very intelligent about equally, it was kind of like movies a lot too. He actually was going to go home to watch Nomadland, so I'm good for you, man. Uh, it's a great movie, you'll like it. Um, basically, what happens is, and this is my biggest issue, movie kind of has three distinctive kind of sections. The first... 30 to 45 minutes are kind of watching Robin Wright with very with almost no dialogue, kind of just wallowing in the heartbreak of losing her family. And I don't mean wallow as an insult. It's not uncompelling because, of course, Robin Wright is a phenomenal actor and is giving a phenomenal performance. But the movie hasn't... Because of this, because it's just her, it doesn't really come to life right away. And then Demian Pajir shows up at about, I guess, the 40, 45 minute mark. He's in the movie for the next, like I said, 30 minutes. The movie's only about 89 minutes long, and that includes it. So really in the scheme of things, it's more like 84 minutes, 85 minutes. Very short. So between, I'd say, the 40 minute mark and the 70 some minute mark. The best section of the movie is there, because you see the, the friendship between them is very believable, it's very dialogue-driven, it's really a two-hander, it's these two people. But I had the same problem with this movie that I had with a movie that I saw last year that I liked, but just missed. Uh, another indie, indie movie, a, a kind of drama called The Last Shift with Richard Jenkins, which I liked a lot. And the things I liked about it made it so hard for me to talk, for me, it made all the more disappointing when it kind of let me down. And it's kind of the way I feel about Land. Because at that point, without spoiling anything, Damien Bajir basically says, like, I'm, I have to go. Um, can you take care of my dog for a bit? I'll be back. I don't know when, but I'll be soon. She goes, yeah, sure. Because he just assumed, you know, she just wants to be on her own. So we see a couple shots of just her and the dog, right? Then she goes to see the nurse from before, and it's revealed to us through the dialogue, and nothing else, and in a really kind of slapdash way that two years have passed in the three-minute montage between him leaving and her going to see the nurse lady. And it gave me kind of whiplash, because I'm like, when did these two years pass? There was no really time, there was no indication through anything, there was no um, thing. And then, from there, that's about the, I guess, more like the maybe the 75 minute mark here. The last 10, 15 minutes or so of the movie, it doesn't just kind of race to the finish line. It sprints as fast as Quicksilver to it. And it's, and it's, a pity because this movie could have used another five or six minutes because the way it moves it, at least because the way it moves is it kind of does all these revelations come out there is you know three in at one where like someone is in a dire strait in that moment for instance and then the full reason for the tragedies of both main characters all happen within, I'm not even joking, the same kind of four minutes of screen time. And then one more little thing happens, and then the movie's over. And there's really no way of figuring out, it, it, it discombobulates me anyway. And I was paying attention. I never, like, blinked or dropped out of the movie at all. I was fully paying attention to it. But it just kind of threw me off, because it's like, first off, right when she says, you know, um... I met you two years ago, and you realize two years have passed. From there, the movie is just confusing to me, honestly. It, it kind of kind of became... Went from being a good movie and then being a great movie to being a movie where you're kind of like... Your reaction is, huh? Um, and I don't want to act like I'm down on it, but I'm. this is a hard movie to score, even. Because I haven't... I, I made a plan to do these video reviews before I do my written reviews. I haven't done my written reviews on Letterboxd for either of these movies yet. Um... I'm doing it right after this. I don't know what to do here, guys. This is I'm in a corner with this movie. I It's a good movie that just barely misses being a great one, and I almost want to dock it more for that, but at the same time, the things that were good in it weren't just good, but were kind of great. And that's why I'm kind of, I'm bummed about this one. Um, 
let me put it this way. The best I can say about it is this, as a debut is that I liked Robin, this first movie of Robin Wright. And if she can work out stuff that works here and really make a whole movie with that and really kind of build something off from this, the stuff that really works in this, I might just love her second one. But for now, I only just kind of, kind of like the first. And I'm, that's a bummer because um, it's good filmmaking. Her, her filmmaking here is really good and her acting is really good. Oh, on the acting across the board, the standard things... The kind of base level things, cinematography, base level things that make a movie good are, are terrific here. But there's something missing at the core of it. There's just something... And a lot of it exists in that last 15 minutes that kind of throws... It doesn't ruin the movie, but it just kind of takes you a bit out of it. So... But I still think it's worth seeing. I wouldn't walk two blocks for it. That's why I can't really go even four stars with it. But it is worth seeing. And it's short enough that I feel like a matinee would work for this. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to score it. Land, um, Final Verdict kind of, it, it's a good movie that could have been great, but I think it just kind of rushed itself, and it was too short. Um, I'm going to give this one three and a half stars. Um, and maybe it'll change a little bit up to four after I think about it more, but just in this very moment, I'm just thinking three and a half stars. Because what I liked about it wasn't enough for me to hold, to give any kind of solid recommendation but a moderate one. It's, it's kind of a mixed bag, but the things that work in it are... And it is worth seeing in theaters just for the filmmaking alone, if you can, or it's worth seeing in a matinee or whatever. Or renting it, I guess. Would rather work for this, but you know what I mean. So, um... That's land. We're gonna close the book on it. Um, I don't want to flip down on it. I really... I, I, I'm saying all this because I want Robin Wright to keep at it, because she is a good filmmaker on the basis of this. I just want to see her grow from this a little bit. Um, you know, because I really, really want her to see this as a director, and I think she can. I think this movie is a good start, but I just think it's only a start, and I think she needs to go a little further. All due respect, because you are phenomenal, Miss Wright. Okay, um, real quick, we're gonna do some trailer trash, and there's a little more this time, and there's some new movies this time. Um, a couple I've covered before, we can breeze through those. Um, we're gonna wonder what I watched them. First movie is a movie I haven't even heard of, a couple of these I haven't heard of that I want to see now. I thought it looked really funny. It's one of the better trailers I've seen in a while. And it's a movie called... I think I'm remembering it. I think it's called French Exit. Um, it's an indie film. It's Sony Pictures Classics, I think, is releasing it. It's Or maybe has already released it. Who knows? Things come here late, but um, if they come at all. It's uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, the great Michelle Pfeiffer, Lucas Hedges. Um, and um, I, I just, like, spotted a Imogen Poots in there. And the premise of the movie is, it seems to be, Michelle Pfeiffer is this this woman, and um, it's kind of about her with her son, and it's very kind of caustic and sardonic, and it's, um, the actress, I forget her name, but she was in the movie Patty Cakes, do Patty Cake Dollar Sign, it was a good movie, um, it looked really, really funny, I'm, I, I'm interested in that one, it looks very, uh, my kind of, kind of cutting, acidic, dark humor, it, it looks really good. Not much to make of the plot, but it just, it's like a mother son. It doesn't seem like it's a plot driven movie, it's just kind of a script driven. Um, okay, uh, the next movie on the docket for the, like, the thing was The Courier. I covered this. I had not heard of it until I saw the trailer in front of The Marksman. It's, um, looks really good. It's like a spy, like I said, it's like a spy thriller. Got a good cast. Got Jesse Buckley, Rachel Brosnahan. You got Ben Dick Cumberbatch. It was good. Um, the third movie on the docket, I gotta hurry and remember these. Oh, it's a movie I'm genuinely excited for. Um, that is, was gonna come out last summer, it's coming out this summer instead, In the Heights. Um, I love this musical, I've never seen it, but I've listened to the soundtrack. Um, I'm really excited, it looks great. Um, John M. Chu will kill it, he, 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 this is, he's in his element here. Um, you know, he's a good filmmaker. Um, the next movie was Nobody, we covered this, I'm pumped for it, I think it looks great. Last movie, and I'm gonna cover it, is The Last Movie is a movie coming out, it's the writing directing debut, I believe, of Eddie Huang, who, uh, Eddie Hong who also did, um, was the focus, uh, producer and the focal point of the show Fresh Off the Boat. He's doing a movie called Boogie. That was the last trailer. It's, it kind of looks like a basketball movie with an Asian kind of bent, Asian-American bent. Looks really, really good. Looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it. And then, um, was there shawarma? No, there was not. Um, so, see you next time soon for Are You Afraid of the Dark and all the stuff tomorrow. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you next time, until next time, Grant the Movie and TV Guy. See it all. I'm happy to share it. Love you, Robin Wright.
Love you all. Um, take care. I don't thank you all.